Well, hello, I'm Doug Apple, back with another special interview for you. It's the Christmas season. You've probably seen the red kettles throughout the community. The Salvation Army is out collecting money. What do they do with that money? Should you be giving money to the Salvation Army? Uh, Mike Sherman says yes. He's the legal counsel for Share Healthcare. You've Heard the ads on Wave 94. They bought a little airtime. We have our interviews with Mike Sharman. And today we're going to start by talking about generosity at Christmas time as we're in the Christmas week. And Mike, you especially have a heart for the Salvation Army and the Red Kettles. So I'm sure some people give and some people maybe they don't give or some people think they can't afford to give or some people think, well, Why would I give to the Salvation Army? What's that all about anyway? So I'm going to let you take it and run with it. In one way, giving to the Salvation Army is just giving to Christmas. Because isn't that one of the major icons that we have of the Christmas uh, season? And and here we are in the Christmas season. um, And if you watch pretty much any Hallmark movie about Christmas, you're going to at some point in the movie see a, a bell ringer out there with the red kettle. Mm-hmm. It, it's just an icon of Christmas. And if we see the Salvation Army um, donations or the, what they receive in those red kettles, if we see that going down year after year after year, which is what the uh, is occurring right now, that lets us see that the Christmas spirit is dwindling mm. because what is the Christmas spirit? It's the rejoicing over the birth of Christ, rejoicing over the fact that God chose to come to earth, gave up comfortable heaven to come to, you know, reduce himself, have to come down to earth and suffer through all the problems that we have of just the day-to-day living. And he did it for others. That's the, the essence of what Christmas is about, is for us thinking of others first, gift-giving. And that's what the salvation is all about. You know, there's the, um, the famous story about the founder of the Salvation Army. He wanted to send out a Christmas message out to all the workers all around the world. And so he wrote up his Christmas message, went down to Western Union, which, of course, they didn't have texting back then. Uh, went to the Western Union and said, okay, how much is this going to cost to send it to these, you know, many, many, many addresses around? And they told him, and um, he, he was floored by the price, and kept reducing it, kept getting a new price, kept reducing it, kept um, getting a new price. And finally, he sent out a one-word message to all the Salvation Army workers around the world, others. Hmm. That's what it's about. And, you know, the, the Fox um, Business article today was that the Salvation Army's annual Red Kettle campaign is down for the fourth year in a row, steadily, steadily, steadily dropping down uh, in the amount that they receive. How does that affect all of it? Well, that lets us know that as a culture, our Christmas spirit, our joy in Christmas, our thought of giving to others has dwindled year after year after year. I don't typically give a large amount to when I put anything in the kettle. And occasionally, you know, my wife and I might send off a, a check to the Salvation Army when we know of a, a, a person that has been helped by the Salvation Army, perhaps with some of their, um, you know, fire assistance when, when people's houses are burnt out or something, and then the Salvation helps them immediately. But typically, whenever I pass one of those red kettles, I normally don't donate when I go into the store. I you know, tell the person ringing the bell to catch you on my way out. And I, I really carry a lot of cash on me. I normally have a few small denomination bills, and I'll put one or two in. And it won't be a big deal. But you just want do that and see how it lights up the face of that person standing out there ringing that bell, standing there for hours ringing that bell. And it lets them see somebody cares. They're standing out there because... They're either a recipient of the Salvation Army's help, and so they're doing this with the Salvation Army, or they're a volunteer that just really cares about it. Either way, they've been standing out there watching people go past them, go past them, go past them, go past them with no contribution, and you just put in a little token, and it it just encourages them. What are some of the things that the Salvation Army does with that money? Well, one, I mentioned that they um, help people who have been burnout 
um, that their house has been um, destroyed by fire, they and the Red Cross come alongside immediately, like that day, but really as soon as the call comes. Um, they have, you know, the holiday giving, just the, um, you know, gifts, just like um, Prison Fellowship does, uh, gives to kids who aren't going to have anything. Um, they do rent assistance to somebody who's going to be put out on the street. They uh, help with emergency housing for people in fire that have had fires. Um, a lot of people don't know that the Salvation Army is a church, and pretty much wherever they are, they have a church. Uh, you know, with Sunday services, uh, a lot of times youth fellowship time, uh, they have food pantries. They have a lot of rehab programs, a lot of drug and alcohol programs. Um, they have veteran services, help for domestic abuse, etc. Now, I don't want to pump up the Salvation Army overly much because they also have become more liberal over the years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, do be prayerful about it. Do look at what their doctrines are, things of that nature, what they're assisting. But again, it's a, um, with Salvation Army going down in, in, uh, in their contributions year after year after year, it's a, a big indication of a, a thermometer, let's say, of our culture's view of, of Christmas. Do we cherish it? Do we love it? Is it really the best time of year? Or are we just beginning to think it, uh, you know, a great commercial time of year, good for business, um, get a, pay day off or are we really truly thinking of others well mike you're with share Healthcare. i would like to switch gears a little bit away from the salvation army and the christmas season and all that because it's also another season of what they call open enrollment when it comes to health insurance and there's a new headline that i picked up from the npr but it says this for the third year in a row, ACA health insurance plans see record signups. And then in this article, I read this little interesting quote. It says, four out of five people who are shopping are ending up getting a plan on the Marketplace website for $10 or less per month in premiums. And that's according to the HHS secretary. And uh, he said, you can't go see a movie for $10. Here's one month of health care coverage for $10 or less. And more than 15 million people have already signed up through the health care exchanges in the states that allow that, which is 4 million more people than this time last year, according to this report. So $10 a month, that just sounds like an amazing deal or is it? So what is the story behind these $10 a month health insurance plans through the uh, ACA marketplace? Let's say if somebody had no other choice, it might be a good deal. But there, there are other choices. So let's just pocket that and keep that in mind. But speaking of, speaking of pocket, the big problem with these, that $10 plan, that's the bronze plan. And then that's the bronze, bronze plan for just people who are uh, at a certain multiple of the poverty level. Um, but the out-of-pocket maximum limit and the deductibles are the big problem. So here's what the healthcare.gov itself says. Um, after you spend you, the amount on deductibles, co-payments, and co-insurance for inward network care and services, your health plan pays 100% of the cost of covered benefits. Well, that sounds good because your eye immediately goes toward the 100%. But the, the big problem is the deductibles, the co-payments, the co-insurance. So the bronze plan, that $10 plan, you have to pay 40% of every single bill up to 18900 Let's call it 19000 for a family. So you pay your $10 per month. And then if you actually have medical bills, you're going to be paying 40% of them up to $19,000 per month, which means you're going to be paying more than $1,000 per month. So, I mean, how good is that? And yet that is the deal. Plus, then we, of course, have the problems that conservatives will see of this makes massively big government, which is not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. And then it also uh, pays for and 
solidifies into our culture the things that God would not want. You know, abortifacient, abortion, uh, the gender destruction and deterioration, those, those type of things. Plus just the, the whole concept of dependence. Uh, you know, the self-sufficiency is, is erased by this type of thing. And yet it is, as I mentioned, a, a bait and switch. Somebody's thinking, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing a good job budgeting this $10. But when you actually need care, you're going to have a, a, a large out-of-pocket uh, amount of money that you have to pay. And yet you're being dependent upon it. And you've had this mindset of government will take care of me. And then when you realize it doesn't, when you actually need it and it doesn't, then you're going to have a contempt for government mm-hmm. when really what we want as we the people, we want to be able to have a government that we believe in, that we support, and that supports us in the necessary areas. And necessary areas is not every single little thing that we want. Well, what are the necessary areas where we would say that uh, we do need a good government? Our Constitution provides for it. Um, that the central federal government is supposed to be taking care of protecting us against foreign invaders, be taking care of inter- international commerce. Surprisingly, one of the few things that the central government is supposed to be taking care of in the con- under the Constitution is the post office. Mm. And yet, uh, how much money is really being infused into that? Um, so roads, post office, uh, international commerce, international protection, are the primary things that the Constitution allows government to take care of. Uh, other than that, there's, there really isn't a whole lot. And yet we've expanded it way beyond that. You know, the, the basic premise of government that our, our founders had and had up until basically 1930s was the smaller government, the towns, the villages, the counties, were to be the most powerful government you know, and have the most options, have the most resources, because they're the ones closest to their people, and they know what their people need and want. And then the next uh, most powerful government, but less powerful than the local ones, would be the state government. And then the state would delegate a small amount of its power to the federal government. Well, that's completely been flip-flopped, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Where the, the um, federal government, now that it receives the most money, has the power of the purse, and it uses it to um, compel the state and thus the local government to do what the federal government wants. But getting back to the, um, is the $10 a month thing a good deal? If a person has no other choice, and they don't choose to just you know rely upon God and their church to take care of them, okay, well, that's, I guess that's a better choice than nothing. But share health care is a choice. Other health care sharing ministries are a choice your own local church very well might have a very good benevolent plan for people in need. Um, but using share healthcare as an example of what the body of Christ can do, we share the medical expenses of medically necessary care for people. Um, we do it at $149 per month for a single, $249 for a couple, $349 for a family of four, and then $50 for each person after that. So I had mentioned that with this bronze plan, they have like 18900 as the, um, the amount that you're going to be paying out of pocket if you actually need medical care per year. And then they also have that 40% deductible for every single thing. So with that program that I mentioned with Share Healthcare, 149 249 349 uh, there is no um, annual limit. There's no upper limit. There's no lifetime limit. Um, what there is is a $1,000 per event personal expense. So you go to your doctor. He wants you to have a MRI. Uh, he wants you to have a full blood scan. Well, you're over that $1,000. Then that $1,000 will be your out-of-pocket. After that, everything related to that care, if it's cancer, if it's heart problem, um, whatever, after that thousand dollars is fully shareable, so we don't we don't have that type of bait and switch that the healthcare.gov does. And I I know that might sound harsh, accusing them of bait and switch, but when they're they're promoting over and over and over, and I'm I'm sure you get the the media post as much as I do of you know you can sign up for ten dollars, four out of five people qualify. Well, but that's 
that's not the real story. The real story is you, you can be out of pocket $19,000, and even if it doesn't reach that much, every single bill you're going to pay 40% of. And with Share Healthcare, let me just repeat, 149 for a single, 249 for a couple, 349 for a family of four, fifty dollars for each one after that. You pay a thousand bucks for your your for that event and and that's it. Um it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um and that you know, the things that we when we're trying to follow what God wants us to do, it winds up being pretty simple. He he does try to be clear with us about what he wants and what he does not want. And one reason we're able to be that affordable is because we do medically necessary things, not socially um, dictated things. Mm -hmm. We we don't share in abortions. We don't share in abortifacients. We don't share in gender deterioration or destruction care. If your doctor says something's medically necessary, we we share in that. And, And speaking of that, um, your network, when you join Share Healthcare, is the network of every medical licensed medical professional in the world. So you get to choose what doctor, what hospital, or what healthcare provider you want. You get to choose where you want it to occur. And then your doctor gets to choose what is the right type of care for you. It's not dictated to him by some government policy. We're talking about share healthcare, and Mike, as we wrap up our time together, I want you to think about as we are in the still in the Christmas week and looking toward a, a new year. I'm going to let you give some final thoughts there. I'll just remind the people if they want more information about share healthcare, they can look at the website sharehealthcare.com, and you can call and talk to somebody about it at one eight four four share hc. So, Mike Sherman, any final words? Well, you know, we think of the Christmas season as just celebrating the birth of Christ, but he only came to earth and was born on earth so that he could be Emmanuel, God who is with us, so that he could be Yeshua, Jesus, the God who saves. So the God who saves is the God who is with us. And the only reason that he is the God who saves and the God who is with us is so that he can take us to heaven with him to be in his company forever, and that forever is a time in which there is no time anymore. We'll never get bored because it is always now. And the the joy that we have at our first appearing in heaven is the joy that we'll have forever. So as we think of the Christmas time, be thinking of why he came, not just that he did come. As we look toward the new year, don't let yourself dwell upon the past. Mm. That's history. Uh, One great line I heard is, the past is a place we don't live anymore. Also, don't take on the stress of the future too much. Just live in the now. Of course, we need to plan. Scripture tells us that. But don't borrow all the troubles of the future. Don't let the stress of what's coming up in the year uh, overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the present. Plan for the future, but enjoy the present. And don't let the, the cares of the past weight you down like, like this huge bag of garbage that you're pulling along behind you. Enjoy what Christ is giving you, the gospel, the good news, the, the future that he's really planned for you, which is in heaven. And we get to enjoy a bit of heaven here on earth because Jesus is living in us and giving us the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. I mean, that's, that's the essence of Christmas and the correct way of, I think, of viewing the new year. All right. Well, thank you very much. That's Mike Sherman. And for Wave 94, I'm Doug Apple.